We're acquiring traits and conquering challenges. That's right, it's Call to Adventure from Brotherwise Games. This heroic yarn spinner pits one to four storytellers against one another in a competition to tell the most heroic of biographies. Players progress through three acts of their story, casting runes to determine their fate, and walking the moral line between hero and anti-hero. At the end of the game, the player with the highest destiny score is the winner. Setup begins with the shuffle of the various decks. Character cards separated by type, origin, motivation, and destiny. Story cards separated by act one, two, and three. And the hero and anti-hero cards. Each player receives a player board, a hero marker, and three experience tokens. Take the character cards and deal two of each type to each player. Two origins, two motivations, and two destinies. Each player chooses one to keep and removes the other from the game. Then deal one hero card to each player to form their starting hand, which they keep hidden. Next, each player places their three character cards on their board to form their story. The origin on the leftmost space face up, the motivation in the middle also face up, and the destiny card on the right side face down. These cards have icons on them, representing abilities, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Some cards also have point values in either triumph or tragedy, and story icons, which can be worth bonus destiny points at the end of the game. On the left side of the board is the corruption tracker, where each player tracks their moral choices. Place the hero marker on the third level of the track, indicating neutrality for now. During the game, players may gain corruption, lowering their hero marker, or virtue, raising it. But who would want to do that? The placement on the track restricts the type of cards a hero may use and provides a score bonus or penalty at the end of the game. In the common area of the table, set up the three story decks, the hero deck, and the anti-hero deck. Beside each story deck, deal a row of four face-down cards in a three-player game. In a four-player game, deal five cards per row. Place the rune tray nearby with all the runes, core runes, ability runes, and dark runes. Finally, reveal the Act 1 cards face up. The player who last finished reading a novel takes the first turn. Gameplay occurs in turns, during which a player takes actions and then play passes clockwise. On their turn, the active player may choose a card from the face-up row. Depending on the card type, the player may attempt to gain it. If the card is a trait, and they meet the prerequisites on the bottom of the card, they may add it to their story, defining their character's personality or life experience. The prerequisites generally have a cost, like spending an experience token or a required ability icon already in their story. When they gain the trait, they place it under their leftmost story card, leaving the top of the card visible, thus adding the icons to their story. If the card is a challenge, the player's hero has to overcome a daring deed to achieve their destiny. On the left side of the card is a difficulty number with a set of icons which define the type of abilities that can be used to overcome the challenge. On the top and bottom of the card are two path options, one of which the player must choose to attempt. Some of these paths also have a plus one box next to them, increasing the difficulty number. Once a path has been chosen, the player gathers their runes. They always get the three core runes, along with any relevant ability runes, one for each ability icon on their story that matches the challenge type. Additionally, they may spin an experience token to add a dark rune to their pool up to three times. The active player may only roll a maximum of three runes of each type. After applying any bonuses from hero or anti-hero cards, they cast the runes. Let's decipher them. Slash marks add one point to the challenge attempt. Ability icons on the ability runes add two points to the challenge. A corruption icon adds two points to the challenge attempt and also forces the player to lower their marker on the corruption track by one. Other icons allow the player to draw a hero card, anti-hero card, 
one of either, or take an experience token. If the amount of success points equals or exceeds the challenge, the player gains that challenge, adding it to their story and keeping the relevant path revealed. If they fail the challenge, it is discarded from the table and the player gains an experience token instead. Nice try. During their turn, in addition to gaining a trait or facing a challenge, they may also take any number of bonus actions, including playing any hero or anti-hero cards, or spinning an experience token to discard one face-up card on the table and draw and reveal a new one from the same deck. When playing hero and anti-hero cards, they stay next to a player's story and provide either triumph or tragedy points, both of which add toward the destiny score. Players continue taking traits and challenges until the start of a turn when a player already has three cards under their current story card. They then reveal the next row of cards for all players and may attempt to gain those cards. Other players may also attempt the new row on their turn, but must have three cards under their leftmost story card before adding to other story cards. And once they have three, that card is effectively locked. Once a player has gained three cards under their destiny story card, the final act is closed and the end game is triggered. Each other player gets one more turn, and then it's time to calculate the final score. Each player reveals their destiny card and adds up the points. Add all triumph and tragedy points together to make destiny points. These can come from story cards, act cards, position on the corruption track, and those hero and anti-hero cards next to the story. One destiny point for each experience token, any points from matching story icons. A pair gives two points, three of a kind, four points, and four or more of the same icon gives eight points. That's my strategy right there. And the bonus points from the destiny card, of course. Add them up and the player with the highest destiny score is the winner. Players should now go around the table telling their hero's story, recalling all those epic events along the way, how they became so brave and an orphan. And that's called an adventure. The game also includes story mode, co-op play, and ways to expand the game with allies and adversaries. Allies can provide assistance with challenges, and adversaries are a linear path challenge with only one goal, defeat the adversary. Once you've got a few games under your belt, add those into the story decks for more advanced play. I'm Becca Scott, and I'm going full heroic for this one. No anti-hero cards for me, just all good. You know, lawful good Becca, that's what they call me. You can watch me and my friends play this game and other awesome games on Game the Game, right here on Geek and Sundry. We'll see you there.